Close one in Washington as the Chicago Bulls fall to the Washington Wizards, 100 to 102. Very close game. DeMar DeRozan almost did it again in Washington as he just barely missed a three-point shot to win the game. Um, but I have to say, I'm really proud of this Bulls team. They showed resilience. They showed fight. When adversity hit, they were right there. They're like, no, we're staying in this game. Um, so good job on them. Um, welcome back to the Slam Ducky YouTube channel. I am just going to be recapping this game. As you can probably see, I have all these clips of DeMar DeRozan uh, showed um, up, you know, ready to go. Uh, and I'm going to do some film analysis on the Wizards game, but also some film analysis from the Miami Heat game. But this video is specifically just going to be about DeMar DeRozan isolation and how good he is, but also what the Bulls need to do better when he goes into isolation because he can't do everything by himself. As we saw in this Wizards game, it was basically just him and Vucevic and a little bit of Dragic kind of carrying the entire load. The Bulls, you know, the rest of the Bulls team without Zach Levine, they need to step up. There has to be a third score. There always has to be three. And unfortunately, there wasn't a third score today, really, besides Kobe White in the end of the, like the end of the game. Um, so yeah, not that's the offensive end. I think was basically the issue for the Chicago Bulls. I actually thought the defensive end was really good, but we're gonna break it all down in this video. Um, before we get into it, I'll make sure you hit that like button if you're new to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Um, one thing I want to point out in this game, which I think could help this Bulls offense. Fast break points only six. Washington had thirteen. Now this thirteen was basically off of some missed opportunities, I think, for the Chicago Bulls. As we saw, like, Ayo DeSumo, like, he seemed like he was about to get a layup, got blocked. Um, we saw uh, Patrick Williams on a fast break opportunity where DeSumo threw it to him, and he just flat out just missed the ball. Um, and that led to more Washington points. So it's that type of stuff that needs to get fixed. But as we've been preaching this entire preseason, the Bulls have to play fast. They have to play with pace. And... It helps them because we don't want to see them go into the half court offense. And um, if they can get any points in, transi in transition, that's a plus. The Bulls weren't able to get a lot of points in transition. Therefore, it ended up that the Bulls only scored 100 points. Um, and that, that obviously wasn't really good. Uh, the defense in this game, I think, was really good throughout. Um, that second quarter was definitely a little bit rough. But I'm going to, again, the Bulls had a really rough offensive stretch. Four minutes of not scoring in this second quarter. I think that led to most of the Wizards' points. Um, in that quarter and it's same thing in this quarter where the Bulls offense went through another dry spell of no buckets for four minutes um, But the Bulls held on so I got I, I applaud the defense in this effort um, I definitely think at the start of the game. He needs to get better But I think quarters two through four were actually really good defensively for the Chicago Bulls um, That's just my opinion last thing I want to point out is is some of the shooting stuff the Bulls shot seven for 27 from the three-point line That's not good. They need to do better um, and DeMar DeRozan um, and Nikola Vucevic basically lived at the free throw line. So good job by the Bulls. Even though they weren't hitting the three, they were getting to the free throw line. Really good job by them. Uh, they out rebounded the Wizards. Um, so they basically, I feel like, should have won this game if they just shot a little bit better. Um, obviously, this is a game where you miss Zach Levine mightily um, in this one. So I want to get right into some of the, the analysis here and, and some of the film breakdown. So I want to talk about this play right here because a lot of people are kind of like they're having some arguments on Twitter. Um, some people are saying that DeMar DeRozan should have went to the basket, should have uh, pulled for a mid-range shot, uh, or maybe went, you should have went to Vucevic with no Porzingis in the game. Let me just break this play down for you, and I'm going to show you how good of a play this actually is by Billy Donovan. Billy Donovan needs some credit in this in this play that he drew up at the end of the game here. So, ball thrown to Vucevic, okay? Right now, you see Ayo DeSumo, he's going to go this way. It's a misdirection play, okay? This then is going to allow DeMar DeRozan to come up, come up here and take a handoff uh, from Vucevic, okay? This is a phenomenal play by, by Billy Donovan because you see here, the Wizards had to switch this, okay? So Beal is now in DeSumo. We got Denny Abdia now on DeRozan. And now DeRozan has the ball with five seconds left to go. Not only does DeRozan have the ball with five seconds left to go, but now he got the switch. This is Anthony Gill. Now is on DeMar DeRozan. You got the switch you want. And that's number one. But number two, because of that misdirection play, and you didn't just throw it right into DeRozan at the start, the Wizards can't double team right now. They just switched. You cannot double team at this very moment. There is too little time here to double team without potentially you know throwing it to Vucevic or whoever comes off to double. There are so many options then at this very moment in time. Um, this is a phenomenal play by Billy Donovan. He drew this up phenomenally. Like, it, this is great. Um, and I, I want to stress how good of a play this was by Billy Donovan. So, it's straight up just isol isolation DeMar DeRozan. He got the switch. The double team can't come now. Three points, three seconds left. He takes a shot. It rims out. The Bulls lose by just an inch, basically. It sucks, 
But guess what? I think this is the 100% correct play. Um, great play by Billy Donovan. Great job uh, executing it by the Bulls. And DeMar DeRozan, I know a lot of people are saying we don't need a three. We don't need a three. Well, look, in the NBA, if you're on the road, it's kind of like an unwritten rule. You go for the win, okay? If, if you have a chance, go for win for the win at the end of the game. So as we saw what DeMar DeRozan did last year in Washington, or last season in Washington, I should say, um, he went for the win. It's what you do, okay? On the road, if you go into OT on the road, it is very difficult to win. And I know Porzingis did foul out in this game, but Bradley Beal's still in the game. And if you if Bradley Beal was out of the game, then you can kind of convince me to go to OT. But because he's still in the game, I'm like, no, there's no way we, we go for the tie. You you go for the win in this situation. And guess what? DeMar did that. I'll take that shot any day of the week. And it's kind of funny because, you know, only some people were kind of upset at DeMar taking that shot. Uh, if Zach Levine took that shot, Twitter would have been on fire, um, which doesn't make any sense to me. You go for the win on the road, okay? It's how it always goes. You always go for the win on the road. Um, so I have no issues with that with that uh, shot by DeRozan. And then last thing here, for all you people that are talking about, well, DeRozan kept getting to the free throw line. Like, why not try to drive and go in for a foul? No, you never, ever, ever put the game in the hands of the officials at the end of the game. You never do that. It is something you should never do. And stars will tell you this. DeRozan even said this last year. You never put it in the hands of the officials. You never do such a thing. Because guess what? DeRozan even got fouled on this shot. Look, look, look at the shot. He he got fouled. He got undercut by his defender. He landed on his defender's foot. I know you're going to say, well, DeRozan jumped forward. That's DeRozan's motion in his usual shot. He usually jumps forward. That's how he always jumps. So, he actually got fouled in this in this exact shot. And guess what? Nothing was called. If DeRozan drove to the rim, got hit and everything, there's nothing, nothing to be called. It never gets called at the end of the game. I would much rather lose on a jump shot than try to drive to the rim and hope to get a foul call and you don't get it called and lose that way. N- never, ever, ever put it in the hands of the officials. So even Will Gottlieb from CHGO, I love them, by the way, um, it's like landing spot foul. Well, guess what? It's the end of the game. You're not going to get it. And that's the reason why I'm just like, no, you never, ever, ever put it in the hands of the officials at the end of the game. So that's just um, my little spiel I wanted to talk about in this one. Because, man, I, I, don't, I just, I'm sick and tired of it. I don't, I don't want to see this stuff on Twitter anymore, but that's just my opinion. Um, now I want to get into the DeRozan isolation because DeRozan has been phenomenal to start the year. And a lot of it is isolation. Um, and his ability just to create his own shot off the dribble in the mid range. And I want to say this, like the problem that I'm starting to see, at least in this game, because the bulls are struggling to score so much. He like, we resorted to basically last year after the all-star break. And that's not what I want to see in the heat game was a little bit different, but in this game, and just for example, this play, it's just a lot of standing around and this wasn't very good by the bulls. And I think if they just moved a little bit more on, um, they could have done a lot better. So for example, we're, we see a lot of this one, three, pick and roll or one four pick and roll whatever you want to call it or um three one pick and roll pick and roll i should say uh where you had the point guard come and set a screen to get a smaller guy on on DeRozan. so in this case you got i would assume in, uh, setting a screen on abdia and so you get bradley beyond demar DeRozan, which is good you want this matchup but you see right here in this play everyone's just kind of standing right you got vucevic here you got caruso here like everyone's just kind of standing around and the only person you kind of see move is io Desumu, um on this play so you see I, I, oh, he kind of runs to the corner a little bit. Um, in my opinion, something needs to happen here on this side. I think after Io sets the screen, I think he needs to either set a pin down for Patrick Williams to come off from that, or you you do the opposite. You have Patrick Williams come up here and set a flare screen, and Io runs to the corner. Um, just do something because right now you see Kuzma and Avdia, they're just they're locked on DeRozan. That's not what you want. And on this side, I think it's actually pretty simple. It's just Vucevic come over here and Caruso come up here. Um, and if you're going to do a, this on this side, so if you have the pin down on this side and Caruso does this, then on over here, I just need these two just to switch places. There doesn't even need to be a screen. Just those two switching places just keeps them moving, keeps the defense like, oh, where, where is my guy? Just that little simple thing can help a lot. Um, so in my opinion, that that's what needs to happen because if Vucevic comes over here and uh, starts screening for Caruso, this takes Porzingis out of the play. Um, now, again, here's the thing. DeRozan, it looks good because DeRozan hits the shot. Watch. I mean, DeRozan is just that good, and he just can get his shot over anybody. But that's not something I want to build a habit of. 
in 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 with this team that's not something i want to continue to see um again here we go isolation again it's just simple like look i know he hits the shot but that's again not something i want to see con consistently with this team so in this play for example um i'm fine with Caruso just standing here because you have three guys on the other side of the floor here but um, I believe this is Kobe White. If he just comes over here, screens Porzingis, and you have Vucevic kind of run to the paint for just a second, again, takes takes Avdia off of off of this, and then you can move Io to Sumo all the way to the corner um, as the play is developing, and then he moves uh, whatever from whatever uh, or reacts from whatever Demar decides to do. So I think that's just something that the Bulls need to consider doing. Um, and again, here's another Caruso and DeRozan pick and roll here, and it, you just see it's just straight up like. ISO, here we go, and just a simple pick and roll, right? And you have Vucevic standing here, which is not not ideal. Look at Bam, right? Bam was the guy that uh, that got uh, that got screened, um, and so now uh, Hero's, Hero took DeRozan, who was guarding Caruso. Look at Bam, like Bam's coming up to double DeRozan, and DeRozan's again, he's very good, so he's just able to knock this down, but he just hit that shot over two people. That's not what you want to see, right? Um, so. Again, here we go. It's just straight up isolation. I, I know this is from the Heat game, but something, man. Just do something here, and specifically these two guys because it's the strong side of the ball. Um, I would like to see either Javante just dive cut here and Desumu then comes up, or you could do Javante sets a pin down, Desumu comes up, or he can either go this way. Like, there's so many things you can, you can do with this. Um, even uh, Desumu kind of saying the flare and Javante kind of going around like this. It's just, again, keep... Keep the off-ball defenders occupied. It's very simple. Again, DeRozan hits the shot because, you know, DeMar DeRozan is so good. So it's just something to keep in mind. And I'm going to show you examples of what I'm talking about here. So in this case, we have the simple, you know, DeRozan Vucevic pick and roll. So here we go, top of the key. How many times have we seen this, right? Here comes Vuce, pick and roll, DeRozan, all right. Um, and you, you have... You know multiple options with this you can either hope for the switch or you can drive to the rim in this case you get the switch miami switching everything so you got bam out of bio on derozan that's that's a good matchup for derozan okay but watch caruso this is the part where i'm like this is good you're gonna see caruso come on over here and set a pin down and i would assume it's gonna come up here so it's very simple basketball but as this play g goes on watch caruso pin down right i would assume it gets comes up to to the break and he gets a three-point shot off that's what I want. That's it's very simple stuff. But even in just that play right here, you can see how much all of a sudden. Look at Butler. Like, look, look at Jimmy. He has to move. Jimmy has to move because of Caruso is about to set a screen here, and Caruso's moving towards the rim. Therefore, this opens up so much for for Demar to either just go ahead and go one on one, or you get Io Desumo a wide open shot. It's very simple stuff. Now, one thing that I do love that I've seen recently um, in the Bulls' offense is is this. To start, like, if we're just going to go straight up to Rosen isolation, which, again, that's not a bad thing. It just, if you're going to do it, you need to do it right. And what the Bulls are starting to do here is Caruso starts baseline, and once DeRozan catches the ball here, and he's going to come up here and set, uh, what's this called? Uh, rip screen. This is a rip screen. And you see Ayo Sumu take it and run to the paint, okay? So that's the first part of this. So watch that develop here. Here comes Caruso, rip screen, and there goes there goes Ayo. Now, Caruso, who just set the rip screen, is going to come up here, and he's going to set a screen for DeRozan, and you're ideally going to get the switch. But you already kind of see what this is doing. Look at Tyler Hero right now. Hero's all the way over here, right? He has to guard the rip screen by Io to make sure Io doesn't get a layup. And now he's already out of position for this pick and roll that DeRozan and Caruso are about to run, okay? So you do this here, and, and Hero's a little bit late. Miami switches everything, okay? Now, the good part, again... You just saw Io run from here to the corner. That this is going to help clear out Lowry. Okay, um, as this happens, Vucevic moves up a little bit over here. Now Caruso, it's like the reason why I love this is that now this officially just occupies his man. Like Caruso could be anywhere, but because he just set the screen, it takes that defender out of the equation completely. So again, this is just really good stuff that I like to see. The Rosen's able to get the one on one into the paint, and it's a simple bucket. Okay. Um, now on this play here, we have the, the Vucevic or the Rosen Vucevic pick and roll. And you can see here that the Rosen decides to go baseline. Now I said that in this game, I was actually happy to see DeRozan get away from this in the second half. But in this one, you see, he actually goes for it, but you see here, 
even on this play, Patrick Williams started here. He moves in inside. Caruso was the one baseline here. He moves back out to the corner. And Io, you're going to see here, he's going to move all the way over here. Because how many times have we talked about this? The skip pass from side to side is very hard. Io, if he moves up here, makes himself available. And what happens? DeRozan sees Io. Okay, I'm in trouble. Double team comes. Io moved to get himself available because he's been hitting that shot. Martin runs out on him, and he's able to go in for the layup. So it's just recognizing this type of stuff. Um, and I know Desumu in the Washington game kind of had a rough game. Um, so he kind of sat a little bit more, but I think he's honestly one of the best that like recognizes this type of stuff. Um, so again, here we go. I, we talked about that same action with Caruso and Io. Um, I don't think there was a screen set this time, but you see Io's running through here and guess who's coming up to set the screen, right? Same action. Um, so here comes Caruso and here comes the switch. Again, Caruso was the one screening that he basically takes his man with him so he can go wherever he wants to. Io moved to the corner. It's straight up isolation. And DeRozan is just taking Tyler Hero 101. That's the, if we're going to ISO, I want to see that. That's the, that's the stuff I really love to see. Um, and in this play here, it looks very similar, right? So you, if you want to think that this is like a staple in the Bulls offense, I'm showing you right now. So this was the exact same play. Look, here comes Io. He's going to run through. Here comes Crusoe's screen. They get the switch. And just this simple little action, again, it opens up a lot. Watch what Crusoe does right here. He kind of just a little bit nudges Porzingis. It's kind of a screen. It's not really. He just kind of nudges him a little bit. Um, and even if he like barely made any contact, him rolling to the rim makes sure that Porzingis has to come on over to guard him for just a second. So it opens up a wide open shot for Vucevic. So it's just, again, off ball movement when DeRozan is going to isolate like this. So on this play right here, <laughs> um, this was basically the DeRozan uh, and one, but watch Caruso, watch what he does. Okay. He is like, all right, here comes the double team. He's running. Th this is what we need to see, right? It can't just be Caruso and Io that, that recognize this type of stuff. It has to be everybody. Okay. Has to be everyone. Now, this is a play that I absolutely loved because this helps DeMar DeRozan, um, like, or this helps the offense kind of stay in motion, but it gets DeRozan a wide open or, or basically an open look in the main range, which is where we want him to shoot anyway. So, Dragic, so this is what we call a horn set, okay? Point guard up here. You got the guys at the elbows and you got two guys in the corner, right? This is horn set. So, Dragic is going to take the, the, the screen from. Uh, Javante Green, it's a handoff, dribble leaf handoff to DeMar DeRozan. So DeRozan's going to catch it. Now you see Drummond's going to already come on over here and set the screen. Um, so this is good. Watch what Javante does, by the way. Javante's moving. See, this is this is the whole point of this whole play. Everyone's moving besides Kobe. So Javante's taking his man out of the equation. And this pick and roll now, uh, as, the screen, at, as the screen's happening, Kobe moves up, Javante moves over to, to the corner. Um, this opens up a wide open look for DeMar DeRozan. Maybe it's not wide open, but it just creates just enough space for him to get the shot and he knocks it down. I didn't see that in the Wizards game. Kind of surprised, honestly, but maybe I just missed it. Um, so again, um, isolation. Okay. Here comes the Caruso pick and roll. It's very simple things in this play. Again, Caruso, he just set the screen up here. He's now going to run over here and screen bam out of bio. What does this do? Look, simple little hit. Vucevic then moves up. His man just got screened. It opens up a wide open three for him. Last play here. Um, I know this is 18 minute video. I apologize. It's gonna be 19 minutes. Um, we're just gonna we're gonna watch this. So I'm not saying that this has to be done every time when DeRozan isolates. There's there's definitely gonna be possessions where he just gets the ball and everyone just kind of stands there, and that actually might be the best play. But it can't be every play. So. Especially in late game, you're going to see DeRozan and Levine isolate a lot. It's just how the NBA works. And with the game slowing down, it's honestly the best option. So you need to see there's going to be plays like this. You, there's just going to be plays where everyone just kind of stands there. But throughout the game, if you're going to isolate, you need to see off ball movement, which I just showed you all in this video, right? And that's the reason why this heat game was so good is because it felt like a more team win because everyone was kind of moving off ball specifically in the second half on um, the first half it was a little not so good but specifically the second half was great for the heat game in this uh the wizards game it wasn't good it you just saw a lot of standing around and depending on vooch and derozan just kind of the score so this is the last play by derozan like you see everyone just kind of stood there that this is okay because it's late game situation and it's honestly the best uh, option whoops i apologize for that it's the best option um 
because you saw that the Miami Heat weren't coming to double. Like, if no one's going to double, then, like, that, I understand that, especially if DeRozan just is in, is just has it going. But the main thing is, throughout the game, you have to have that off-ball movement to keep using that isolation play effectively, um, because without Levine, that honestly might be your best option if it's just DeRozan on the floor. So, um, just, you know, kind of disappointing that the Bulls lost this one uh, against the Wizards. I think, uh, I would have liked to see them build the momentum off that Miami Heat game, but now we're gonna go into cle- or we're gonna go into the home opener on Saturday, which you guys should be it should be today when you see this video. Um, and Darius Garland's not playing. Zach Levine should play. I expect to be on minutes restriction, but um, it should be a fun one, honestly. Um, so that's all I have for you guys in this video. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. If you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. I hope to see the Bulls. Uh, beat the Cavs, so we're now 2-1 in the season. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.